Um, Okay, well, hi everybody, and welcome to our webinar this month. Um, it's all about skincare um, and the usage of adhesives on your skin. Um, this webinar will be recorded, but uh, your name and your face won't be in it. It's actually um, Thomas that will be, um, and his presentation that's recorded. The only time you might hear your voice is if you raise your hand and, and ask a question throughout, but you won't. They, we won't see your image or anything like that. Um, if you have any questions throughout, um, I was going to say to pop them in the in the box below um, and then we would answer them at the end. But actually, um, Thomas um, has just said if, you know, if you have questions throughout, um, then I can pose them to him um, throughout. So you don't have to wait till the end um, and hopefully we can get that uh, answered there and then. Um, there have been some questions answered beforehand, which I will ask at the end. Um, so um, if you do have questions throughout, again, you can raise your hand um, and, and uh, Hannah can either unmute you and you can ask it yourself or you can pop it in the chat and I can ask um, Thomas while, while, you know, while he's presenting. Um, again, if there's any questions that you think about, um, you know, afterwards that you, you wish you'd asked, um, please do pop it uh, on an email, which will pop up the end or Hannah can pop in the chat at the bottom for us. Okay, we'll just go on to the next slide, Thomas, if that's okay. Just um, yeah. Thomas got control of the, the slides. Oh, hang on, sorry, I'm just gonna look at the, there's been a couple of comments. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's why it's different, no gallery, yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the next slide, Thomas, if that's okay. Um, so um, before we start, um, I just need to read a disclaimer, which um, Thomas, if you don't mind popping on, it's just the second slide, I think. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> before we go anywhere. I think it's just taking a minute, perhaps. Oh, sorry. I know. I think I've asked about three times. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nagging you. <laughs> Has it changed on yours, Thomas? We can just only see the first. Oh, it says I'm changing mine, but yeah, then I made something wrong with oh, the presentation. No? Oh, you've got it now. Brilliant. Okay, so I just need to read it, um, read it out. And I've now done something to my screen as well. Um, sorry, I can't see the presentation. Okay, so this presentation is a corporate presentation from ATOS Medical Group. Nothing in this presentation provides any diagnosis, clinical advice, indication, guide, warranty or guarantee. Nothing in this presentation can substitute individual advice or guidance from a qualified healthcare professional. You must see your clinician or qualified caregiver for advice on your condition and on products that may be appropriate for you. Um, this, this event is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook. By joining this webinar, you're consenting to being recorded and live streamed during this event. But as I said before, um, your, your picture or your, your name, you know, won't be on the screen for this one. Um, so just on the next screen, if you don't mind, Thomas, the next um, slide, sorry. Uh, a, little, a little bit about us. <laughs> yeah. So um, my name's Jamie Cooper. Um, I'm a head and neck nurse for ATOS Care. I actually am in the field, so I go out and cover the whole Southwest and I go out and see people at home. There's about five nurses that cover the UK. I'm one of those nurses. Um, and then with us today, we have uh, Dr. Thomas um, Rustmeyer, and he is an expert dermat dermatologist from Amsterdam University Medical Center. I'm just gonna pass over to him for the duration of the webinar, and then you won't have to look at my face anymore. <laughs> I'll pass over to him just now. Jay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm very happy to be this afternoon together with you and all yeah. the audience somewhere. And I hope the presentation works fine. Um, since I would like to share some thoughts on skin problems in relation to osteotomy. But if everything, anything is not clear, or if I haven't explained it well, please correct me, interrupt me, add it to the chat. The intention is that we all learn this afternoon from each other. And this is always true. Only genius have the absolute truth. But for us, as normal ones, we have to learn from each other. I'm working as a dermatologist in Amsterdam, uh, the capital of the Netherlands, where I've been trained as a dermatologist and an immunologist, which is my real background. But now, as we're getting older, I'm responsible for the, our clinic, for our university clinic, 
for the, everything which is not easy. And this is in particular related to uh, severe skin reactions and allergies related to immunology. And I would like to take you through within the next minutes, hour, a certain important things we always have to keep in mind if we talk about problems with our skin. Therefore, we have to think about the physiology. So, I mean, the anatomy, how is normal skin built off? And how does it work? What's the function? And if we understand this, we also can try to understand problems occurring with ostomies, tracheostomy, for example. And then we can learn how to prevent it and who should pay more attention in order to prevent problems. And finally, if we have failed in prevention, how can we treat problems? And this is something I would like to do together and to share our own experiences and knowledge. This is normal, healthy, intact skin. We do see a good barrier. Thomas. Sorry to interrupt, Thomas. Sorry. I don't think the presentation's working. We're still stuck Ouch. on the disclaimer slide. Oh, that's very really pity. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. That's okay. Um, oh. Then I... Thanks for, for saying. I mean, that's I'll not just, the... Yeah. Um, it's a disclaimer slide. Aha. Uh -huh. Then it's, it's not time for a commercial break. Um, exit for a break. I, aha. Uh -huh. Maybe I have done something wrong, which is definitely the case. Um, Bless you. This is the same blame side. So I've got I've, John saying it's good, a big screen now. Oh, I think, John, I think you can see Thomas because he's um, stopped showing his screen for a minute. So once he's um, Thomas has had a look at it, hopefully we can get a screen share on and you'll be able to see his presentation. If not, we could always do it all on our end and, yeah. and just we just have to say next next slide, please. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm oh, reopening presentation aiming at the first slide this one is okay uh, now. i can see that we can see the first slide and it should be now in presentation mode it is and it's going to the second one can everybody see that yes Perfect. So I'm not reading the disclaimer again. You have yeah. done it so well. Okay. <laughs> I did such a good job at that. Why would you know you wouldn't want to? <laughs> Great. Thanks, John. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for correction. Hey, that's that's uh, that this is the program which I had had in mind. But of course, it has to be flexible, no, alive. So if you have other ideas, other uh, suggestions, please correct me and interrupt me. Um, this is normal skin. And we recognize it as normal skin, as we have an, as a very nice skin with an intact barrier where a droplet of water simply stays on. It is not coming into the skin. So what is the structure of normal skin and how does normal skin develop? Therefore, we have to take a kind of cut through the skin, where the outer side of the skin is at the upper side and at the lower is the inner one. And the outer one, which we can see from each other, is called epidermis, which means it is on top of the epidermis. This is the color which makes us human, either white or darker. And it's very thin, it's tiny. It is only a 0.1 millimeter, which means 100 micrometer thin. And underneath, we do have the dermis. And the dermis is a little bit thicker. It is in general one to two millimeters. And this is the strong skin, which helps us to keep our integrity. And underneath, we do find the subcutaneous fat. Some people tend to have more than they want, and so they go on diet. In some places we have less, for example, at the elbows or at the lower legs. And if we hit something, then it's definitely painful. Really showing that we need this fat as a barrier for physical impact. But this is human skin. And we are dealing most of the time with the epidermis, the layers we can see from the outside. And this is a closer look at the epidermis, which is only a tenth of the millimeter thin. And the lower cells are the dividing cells. Each day they divide, they become two. Next day, another one. 
And so gradually we have a developing, differentiating layer of functionally perfect skin. And at the end, as you can see at the outside, they don't have a nucleus anymore. They are dead cells. They are the dead cells people get if they get older, re representing their very good skin barrier. But the whole thing, the whole epidermis is really tiny. And to illustrate this, I've taken a photo of a paper's 500 sheet. 500 sheet are more or less five centimeter thick. And if you, do, if you divide 500 pages by five, then we end up that one sheet of paper is, has the same thickness or the same thinness as epidermis. So thin is our human epidermis. Keep this in mind. And this protects our body. This is already a function. And this is a function which is illustrated here. This is a close look from the outside on the stratum corny, the horny cells, dead cells. You see how close they are together and how perfectly they cover the skin. So the function of the skin are the barrier function and next to it, the maintenance of the interior environment of our body. It means keep moisture inside, otherwise we would um, lose too much moisture, which is a problem in little babies. They don't have an intact skin barrier yet. So for them, it's very easy to lose water, dehydrate. So that's why we all have to drink a lot. Second, maintenance of right, right maintenance of temperature. The skin helps us to regulate the temperature, to lose heat in the summer by sweating or by keeping warm inside by simply shrinking the blood vessels in wintertime. That's why our skin gets pale if it's cold outside. And if you come back in the warmth in the, in the, in the, in the room, in the house, close to the fireplace, then as a reaction, our blood vessels directly reopen to give new food and oxygen to our epidermis. So it's a normal reaction. And also babies have it, but babies lack something. We all, every one of us who have touched babies have experienced their soft skin. Something we lose if we get older, it's normal. Wrinkles are also normal, but it's normal that our skin gets thicker and older, more fragile. This is illustrated in this plot where you can see that if you get older, you get wrinkles, you lose, this subcutaneous and dermal um, collagen and moisture, so the skin gets more fragile for irritation, for example. But before it happens, some people have the stupid attitude to try to get baby soft skin by scrubbing. And this is not really smart. Nature has given us this horny layer as a barrier to protect ourselves against the outside, UV radiation. Without a skin barrier, we get more UV radiation in our body, so we will get a sunburn earlier. Second, the skin barrier is a good prevention of loss of moisture. Third, it's a very effective barrier for the bacteria and yeast and fungi on our skin to prevent them from our skin, from our body, to get prevent infection. And last but not least, it's definitely helpful in preventing the penetration of allergens into the skin. So don't do this. Um, but what happens further? If you think about a stoma, which and a patch, a base plate, then we apply something to the skin daily, every day, same side. And to illustrate what happens if you do this with normal skin, I have chosen skin from our hand, soft skin, as fragile as skin somewhere at our neck. What happens if you occlude it by this base plate a patch from a stoma? We all know what happens if you use gloves. If you use gloves, water impermeable, or doing some uh, work in the kitchen or the garden, then it's a matter of time before we tend 
to feel the unpleasant sweat which is stuck underneath glo the glove and it becomes moisture and unpretty pretty warm and wet. So this is something which we cannot allow for stoma base plates to occur, otherwise the base plate would fall off. Sweaty hands, this is a problem, but it may not, it does not, may, it, it, is not allow, it is not possible to occur under stoma base plate. So the base plates are not simply adhesive materials which you can buy somewhere, they're specifically designed to fulfill the criteria, to stay in place each day of the each moment of the, each day the same site, to keep the skin, the skin intact, healthy, not sweaty, and hopefully not irritates too much. This is illustrated here. At the very thin, sensitive skin, in particular, if you think about our elderly patients who have this thinner, more sensitive skin, maybe after radiotherapy or chemotherapy, where the skin is also um, uh, uh, exposed to these toxic chemicals or radiation, the skin gets damaged and proliferation and reunivation of the skin is impaired. But many, many people, as you can see, are healthy, are happy and healthy with their stoma. So it's just specifically designed to make this possible. Sometimes this kind of uh, stoma uh, devices are used in order to prevent and to try to um, keep the skin healthy. We have seen that underneath the stoma base plate, occlusion can occur, which leads to sweat, as at the end, and friction. And both together cause irritation. And this is something we have to prevent. And therefore, this base plates have a specific design. To start off with friction, everything which you put on our skin has to be removed at a certain point of time. And this has to be done very carefully. Some people tend to remove a plaster in a rigorous effort as quickly as possible, then it won't hurt so much. Nonsense. If you pull hard, then you have to use more force to remove it. And if you add force with this, with this energy in a short period of time, then the chance of getting acute irritation is simply higher. It's, it's physics. So there are many tricks to remove these bandages, for example, in a very carefully, slowly way. Of course, it's painful, since you have the hairs and you pull on the hairs. Not nice. But still, the energy you need to remove it is lower than with one strong there are suggestions to remove normal bandages without pain. And one of them is to use shampoo underneath, simply to dissolve the adhesive material. Others recommend to use alcoholic solutions or a hairdryer to warm it up. But it always depends which adhesive material has been used. One is not the other. And most base plates are much more complicated, sophisticated, which is a better word, than these simple old-fashioned bandages. But also here, if you pull it up too strong, you get this acute irritation as shown in this young child in her neck. This doesn't only hold true for the bandages from or for stoma base plates, but also, for example, here, a sensor used for the monitoring of blood sugar in a diabetes patient. Wonderful, sophisticated, a device to help these poor patients better to prevent the hypo and the uh, glucemia, to, to prevent the falling in a shock. But already, as you can see, it is not only the bandage here, you see around some redness, indication of irritation. And after removing of the sensor, you see it much better. You see the acute irritation caused by the sensor, meant to stay in place for 14 days, so strong adhesive has been used specifically designed on an acrylic base, but unfortunately, patients with sensitive skin can be too strong. The other point, occlusion, which leads to sweat. We've seen what happens with using gloves, then you get this wet hands. This would mean that the base plate or the bandage would fall off. This is definitely not the case. 
So the bandages and base plates are designed that the water can evaporate through. That's the reason that they can stay in place. And it, they're also designed that the skin is not staying wet all the time. Otherwise, the following happens. These are the fingertips of someone who has spent too much time in a pool, a child maybe. And we all have experienced that then after a while, an hour, half an hour, even longer, we get these very strange wrinkled fingers, which last for a couple of minutes, and half an hour, and then it's gone. This is simply the soaking of water into our skin. This damages the skin. We all know if you use water to clean our hands too often, it can cause irritation because water comes into our skin and then leads to sweating up. And this is very comparable to the following, which I have experienced by walking in the forest. On the first day, it was rainy and there was some water uh, at the ground. But in the coming days, when it was dry and windy, the ground dried up. So finally, if we go through the days, we see that there comes at the fourth day, the moment where the soil, which has been soaked enough water and was flat, got dry. And by shrinking, you get this awful cracks. Think it was your skin. Your skin, which was soaked with water underneath the stoma base plate or in the hands, you come out, the skin dries, and then you get cracks in your skin, like in the, so in the soil. And this happens at one of the sites where the skin is the most fragile for everyone. So occlusion and friction leads to irritation. Current irritation about 8% of, of 8 promille of us have had hand eczema. We know this, this is chronic irritation. We won't occur this at our stoma, or our stoma. This is something we have to prevent. So why do some people get these problems and others not? Or why do some base plates stick better? It's also a questions, question from the chat. Yeah? In some people, there we have to go to the person and the soil, as an example. Some soil can take up more water and will last for a longer period of time wet than others. Others have very dry soil, dry skin very easily. So after, already after a shorter period of time, they get irritation. Maybe they experience in particular at the face. Face is very thin skin, often exposed to sun, wind, cosmetics, cleaning agents which leads to this, like the soil, to the breaking of the skin barrier, slight irritation, which we feel as the skin is too tight and we need some cream. We can use cream in our face, but we hardly can use it underneath a base plate. Then the stickiness might be impaired. But to understand this, we further have to understand why someone has such sensitive skin and not everyone. So where is the individual difference? And this starts, in fact, already in early childhood with people among us who have suffered from atopic dermatitis. It starts very early in childhood. At the age of one, 60% who ever will develop it have it. And at the age of four, 90%. And this is one of the symptoms which belongs to the atopic syndrome, where next to atopic dermatitis, we do this food allergy, asthma, and allergic hay fever. Not everyone gets every symptom, but many people do. Luckily, some of us only one, but all have the same fragile skin. And the major problem is that, as I've tried to depict here, that the normal skin, you have the epidermal cells like the bricks here, which are nicely in a layer of grease the cement, the concrete. And this gives a very good, strong binding, a minimized evaporation, water loss, nicely hydrated skin, and the good skin barrier. So if you use a tape, or we have less optimal skin, and with the tape, which we move each day, we always take cells off. So we impair our skin barrier physically and others already have a genetically impaired skin barrier with holes in. 
is shortness of lipids leads to dry skin. Water can evaporate much easily, more easily. And this is the and this leads as a consequence to the disruption of skin barrier and irritation. Nowadays, we do know why. This is normal skin. You see at the lower part, the dividing cells, and as we get up where the, deck, the black dark spots are, that's, just, that's the horny layer. And as further we go to the outside, more and more of these filigree granules appear. This is normal. But there have been some people who lack this filigree. And this is, uh, is found in patients who have this ichthyosis disease. It's a very dry skin where the epidermis is continually re removed and you find all of the dendruff around them and the patient suffering from atopic dermatitis. Next to this physical problem, the normal skin has a very good skin barrier, whereas the others lack it. Thus, people with a sensitive skin belonging to atopic, derma belong to atopic dermatitis and as an expression of their atopic background, where hay fever, asthma, and food allergy belongs to, or have this ichthyosis for gals. And this is something which you can see, by the way, in the palms of your hand. And then I don't mean these lines, which are nonsense so far, as far as I know, but I think about these tiny wrinkles, which you can find, find at your thumb or as your a pink. Very tiny lines. You can see them in these patients as well. You see the patients are young, but still they have many lines, wrinkles, suggesting that they're old. That's not the case. We're talking about the, at the fine lines at their thumbs. This shows that they have sensitive skin and they should pay more attention in the prevention of eczema and irritation underneath their stoma patches. And this is the bad skin barrier. I've shown before nice barrier like roof where all these plates are nicely fitting together. And if you have this bad barrier, then you see it's like of chaos. It's not really closing our skin. You see the holes in. And the holes is something which we all experience. Some of us might dislike trousers or uh, things made of wool from sheep because the wool has little um, fingers which stick into this um, epidermis, which is not flat, but has this relief. And it's simply, simply stick air in. And by sticking it in, if you feel the itch all the time. And that's why these people cannot use woolen garments. So every one of us who has these fine lines at the hands or, in, or problems with wool might think I have sensitive skin and should pay more attention in order to prevent irritation. This young lady, why do I have such sensitive skin? She, now she knows, and she knows that she has to pay more attention in order to prevent problems. And all next to her, every one of us who has dry skin, itchy skin, feeling skin after taking a shower when you have used grease, to, uh, when you have used shampoo or body gel to decrease your skin, then you feel dry skin easily. And all of them have a higher chance of getting skin irritation, in particular underneath these patches. And on top of that, if we all get older, we produce less sebum. Our skin gets drier by nature, thus more sensitive. And if we have damaged our skin by chemotherapy or radiotherapy, very good to prevent, to cure the cancer, but it also a side effect can, um, uh, have a, can be a burden for our skin, for the regeneration of our skin, and make it more sensitive to irritation. And like in this lady, you see how carefully she is in taking care of her sick skin for the plant or procedure. Here, another lady, this is a sensitive, fragile, how many wrinkles and lines skin has. This is very sensitive. We have to take very, have to have very good base plates, very good adhesive materials, very good technique how to remove it and to detect irritation as soon as possible. In fact, this is wonderful that we have the, oh, this, the chance by surgery to make a hole for tracheostoma, giving life back to patients. 
but we also have to live with the consequences that we have to develop techniques to help them as soon as necessary, as quick as possible. And this is very important, not only for patients which we have seen, but patients who have, we have seen in the past to keep them under control and be of help. People get older, so their skin conditions will change and the need for advice might increase. We shouldn't leave them outside, out there without any advice. We also have to keep in mind that all stachytomas are aseptic. They are not loaded with bacteria. They are free of these germs. This has some good base for um, cosmetic and functional good healing of the wound. Often after wound, uh, the surgery procedure, you get this, this temporarily uh, tachyostoma, but then you get the base beds. And then all the, take, the, the careful procedures have or should be under aseptic or low septic conditions. That's please wash your hands before you manipulate. Use the disinfectant if necessary. And use tools and materials which are clean. And if you clean it, clean the wound from the outside, from the inside to the outside. Thus from the dangerous and fragile point to the outside, as it's shown here. And keep in mind, it's an open corridor for bacteria to come to our lungs. We don't have the filter of our throat and nose to prevent bacteria to keep them out. So the risk of getting bacterial pneumonia is high. And therefore, we should really take care and use tachyostoma with a filter. In this man, we do see in the upper part a slight irritation, redness of the skin. This is a sign that the skin here is already damaged and more care should be taken for prevention of more serious effects. If the skin is fine, you can use easy toiletries as, as you have at home. Not soap, which is too, has a too high a pH, which is alkaline, nor to acid, which have a low um, pH, but pH neutral, meaning for the skin, pH five, four and a half. And use water, not, not too hot, which can irritate or too cold, but at a moderate body-like temperature. Dry the skin carefully. Allow the skin to evaporate the excess of water which has been come into the skin by cleaning. And then place the base, base plate according to the instructions. Carefully, not pull too hard of the skin, otherwise you get friction but in a gentle, normal uh, way how does your skin folds. And use, try different materials. As I said, it depends on the period of time after the procedure, after healing and after getting older, and having learned to live with the tracheostoma. And there are quite a variety of adhesives which have the capacity to absorb water meant to use at warm days for a longer period to prevent irritation by the excess of water kept underneath the base plate or at the night, some lighter, thinner products. There's so many differences. And I think your stoma therapist, your speech therapist know much better than me what is right, but try and you have to experience yourself what, it, what feels right for yourself. In general, you can divide these base plates among hydrogels and hydrocolloids. Hydrogels, which are shown here, are not only meant for these kind of wounds. You also can use them for muscle damage or skin wounds and bone damage and so on. So they have a broad variety of clinical applications. Interestingly, the hydrogel adhesives make use of sugar like polysaccharides, protein, which is very uh, amino acid rich or are synthetically made. Polyurethane is an example of that. And they have different physical and chemical capacities to adhere to the skin. As an example, I would like to take out 
the chitosan, which is up here. This is one coming from sea, from seafood, from the crabs, which is part of their outer side of their skin. The chitosan is a very interesting molecule as an example. It can be coupled to other synthetic uh, polymers having aldehydes and carboxy groups in, and they can form this kind of copolymers, which then can adhere to the skin on a very interesting manner. It can bind physically, chemically, like it shifts, shifts space reaction or I mine, it's really strong binding. But most important is electrostatic binding. This is something we knew from the cling foils, which we use in the kitchen. Very strong binding if we adhere it close to other hydrogen rich surfaces, which can be used here, but can be removed easily. Completely different mechanism of adherence than others. So we have to know, to know which is the way of sticking to our skin. And then we know the right way how to remove it without damaging the skin too much. The hydrogel adhesives can be used, have an outstanding biocompatibility. Bio they have a nice biodegradability and have a very good adhesion to tissue. On top of that, they can be used for bleeding. That's why they are also used in acute closure of wounds. Thus, direct post-surgery can be used also in osteotomy. They are also flexible. So if you bend your head, your neck, it moves with you. They are, they are flexible. And they have a certain antibacterial capacity, which is also in this delicate spot very important. But for some people, it appears that they do not bind strong enough. So we need additives to adhere, to increase the adhesive capacity. For example, by use barrier paste containing pectin or um, colophony. It's also frequently used. This is additives which can be used to increase the adhesive capacity. But as early, as soon as you see that there are fly, uh, signs of inflammation like red, redness or injuries already, then antiseptic ointments should be used. You can try it yourself, but most of them have to pre be prescribed, prescribed by your doctor, which makes sense since he or she can help you to find the right diagnosis and the best product. So a product which I have used in the past ones does not necessarily mean that's the right product now. Only if it's the same cost. If you hesitate, if you don't feel sure, ask a doctor or your speech therapist or stomach therapist. Cute. And if skin irritation occurs, it should be treated with a solution which tends to remove this irritation. And this depends on the product, how often, how long it should be applied and how long it should be uncovered, left uncovered. Sometimes it helps to use acrylic film, which is also a hydrogel, to cover it since it's very flexible and can, can enhance the wound healing. But underneath the base plate or a bandage or so, you can't use greasy ointments. They impair with the stickiness, they won't stick anymore. Or zinc paste, they're absolutely not suitable. Um, and um, if you have done that, sometimes you need extra um, uh, solvents to remove it from skin, which in also includes that you remove grease, your own fat, sebum from your skin, which is not good. Please don't use this greasy ornaments, nor zinc paste. And then the second group of adhesive materials used for base plates, they belong to the um, dressings containing um, hydrocolloids, or they are flexible as shown here, tend to be thicker, but have the capacity to absorb water. And they are mostly made of gelatin, carboxymethyl cellulose, or pectin. And this can be a second skin like cover. They are flexible, containing elastomers, and also the same. Material helps to adhere to the skin, adheres to the skin. They are water absorbent, water permeable sometimes, and this can be left in space for a longer period. Water can evaporate through it. 
and can be often removed relatively pain free. This also helps to keep the wound dry. And water is, a pre is, is, is necessary for bacteria or yeast to grow. So by keeping the wound dry, bacteria or yeast have less chance to cause infection. That's the reason we can leave it in, space for, in place for so long. It also can help to stimulate the granulation, recovery, healing of the skin. Well known from all alkus therapies from legs, of, um, from other, other sides of the body. Here we see a stoma with acute irritation and some scaling. Here, a hydrocolloid would be good and appropriate base plate to cover and to heal the skin. In summary, all of our skin, in particular where skin is fragile and sensitive, needs extra attention. But some sites on some spots are more sensitive than others. And definitely the osteomy from a trachistoma is on top of one. Please remove base plates in a gentle, careful way, not too harsh. Clean the skin carefully with pH neutral cleaners and always look whether you can find sites of inflammation. And if you find them, don't hesitate, look for medical help and advice. And check also if the base plate has been placed in the right position. Maybe you have gained or lost weight, which might influence the choice of your base plate. Herewith, I would like to thank you for your kind attention this afternoon. Hopefully it was useful to listen and hopefully you have some questions. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for that, Thomas, and thanks for sharing your knowledge in this area with us. Um, we actually haven't had any questions sort of live. We've had, so I think it's more kind of a comment, but I, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, so Khalid has said, since I had radiotherapy before surgery, I started having spots on my skull. I find it better to keep my hair short to reduce these spots. I don't know if you've got any kind of thing to comment on that at all, or, or um, is it something that you've sort of noticed before or heard before? Um, was it related to one product? Or I, I, I missed that. Or I'm sorry. So since their radiotherapy. Oh, radiotherapy. Um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So they've had, started having spots on their skull. Um, yeah. And yeah, and and yeah, I'm I'm just wondering if there's any comments on that. Really, um, I suppose. Yeah, radiotherapy can cause radiodermatitis, you know, which is really acute inflammation of the skin, starting a couple of weeks after radiotherapy or if you have a longer circle in between already, but definitely not the first period, then the dosage has been, been, uh, been much too high. Yeah. But this fragile skin can last for weeks. And if you have bad luck, then you can get an ulcer. Um, but this can be treated. Now this can be treated with corticosteroids to, to reduce the inflammation and use an excess of um, skin moisturizers, skin creams to keep, yeah. skip, to keep the skin soft yeah brilliant thank you um okay and oh and they said uh, they've tried different shampoo but it didn't work so i'm not sure if you've got any advice at all for the spots on the on the scalp on the on the skull uh, i've got so um i think a shampoo doesn't help to be honest it uh, also, if you play with this around you get more irritation uh, yeah. consult your doctor i think a corticosteroid is still the best choice to reduce this inflammation so go to a doctor and, and possibly get some sort yes. of steroid cream or something. Thank you. Um, and also from Cheryl, um, she, she said, what creams can she use to help with irritation? But I think you've kind of answered that, um, you know, that I suppose if you yeah. tried, is yeah. there any other creams you can try before the steroid cream? Yeah, you can use this kind of wound creams, which can be found somewhere in the supermarket or in the pharmacy, which yeah. are... Uh, over the counter air products, but most of the time they're not efficient. Yeah? yeah. And in order to prevent losing time, just to treat as early as possible to prevent further harm, I think yeah. it's good to use the protein stores early. Okay. Oh, she's um, added on to that that her daughter has a laryngectomy and they use Provox uh, sensitive stoma adhesives. Yeah. Um, but she's um, but she has severe mental learning difficulties. So doesn't always understand. Uh, at the, the about uh, the irritation leading and then she scratches all night and sort of makes it bleed so I, i'm not sure if there's anything there i 
I think this, I mean, if you have, you have to scratch, if you feel itch, there's something we you can't suppress, in particular at night, if you're not conscious. But yeah. um, this really needs to look medical advice. Hmm? Yeah. Sometimes you can take tablets, tablets using as antihistamines, they simply reduce the, the, the feeling of itch. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. it's wise to use them in, on top yeah. of local corticosteroids. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, something we sometimes recommend to when we go and see people is well is sort of to try a different base plate, sort of like a night base plate as well. I'm not sure if that's um, you know, another thing that you would maybe come across at all. Um, yeah. um so uh, so here yeah, another question is when applying a barrier wipe, do you have to wait until it evaporates before putting on a base plate? Yes. Yeah. You always have to be sure that there's no residue on the skin. Huh? Otherwise, you have, if you've occluded, substance or compounds might stay on this, might stay on the skin, which are not meant to stay there and cause irritation. Maybe not directly, but as chronic uh, inflammation is a consequence of repeated slight irritation, it's wise to wait a couple of seconds, minutes. Thank you. And I think something adding on to that really is from Trevor and it says, where does the adhesive go when you use a remover? Does it dissolve? So once you've used the remover, uh, what happens to the kind of adhesive glue, I suppose, um, from that question, once you've, you know, when you're using a remover? It, um, in fact, the, the, the remover dissolve the material left on the skin. This becomes very thin, very tiny molecules which easily evaporate or okay. simply by um, touching it, it will be removed. So it's not that they're coming, going into the skin, definitely not. Therefore, they are much too large. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. I've got a comment from John on the chat as well that says, I'm presuming our adhesive remover and skin barrier is all excellent product, products to use. Um, he said he's lucky he hasn't had many problems with his skin um, with, with that. So that's that's excellent for him. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if there's any sort of hints and tips from John as well in the chat um, when we go yeah. on to the next questions really with, with his. But I think you covered a lot of that with your presentation when you were saying lots of different skin types and, and things like that. And, and unfortunately, some people struggle a bit more than others. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, OK, so I've got a couple. Uh, if anyone's got any questions uh, while I'm chatting, please do. Um, pop them on but I've just got a few that we had sent in before the the presentation um, you've probably already covered it and just let me know if you if you feel like you have um, so I've got here I'm suffering with from itchy skin around my stoma where the base plate fits so I don't know if you've got any sort of comments on that one at all or whether you feel with, you know with the routine that you've mentioned I think it's advice to get it checked yeah. I mean, you can most of the time it's irritation, as we have talked about. But there are few poor people who have an allergy for uh, part, for for uh, parts of the space plate for the adhesive or for the base, um, and this can be checked no, in allergy tests. And if you know that, then for your future you can get base plates without that specific compound. So it helps everyone to select the better thing in the in the future. Brilliant, thank you. Allergy tends to develop gradually and then suddenly it becomes worse. Yeah, yeah. I, I've actually, John's popped on here. Uh, make sure you use adhesive remover and skin barrier each time you change your adhesive base plate. Um, that that would he, that would be his advice. Um, he's saying on here, um, which is sort of like yeah, I suppose it goes with the routine, isn't it? On when you're changing your base plate daily and things. Um, okay, the next one I've got is, um, it's, I think the Provox Life HMEs are very effective, but the Life Provox Life adhesive don't stick as well as the Flexiderm Plus that I, I use. Can anyone explain why and have others experience the same problem? Um, I'm not sure if you can answer whether you want me to kind of jump in here. <laughs> Um, so uh, actually, if you're having issues with your base plate sticking and you've swapped over from Provox to Provox Life, it's definitely worth um, mentioning it to, to one of your customer care reps um, so we can feed that back. Um, you know, we don't we don't always get issues with these, but some with different skin types and things, one thing doesn't always work uh, for somebody that works for another person. So um, can, if, you, if you don't mind getting in touch with, with one of us, we can pop some either you have a hair rep or your nurse if you're speaking to somebody on the phone or pop in your chat an email address so we can get in touch with you and maybe discuss around what might be going you know going on but again 
you know, if your routine hasn't changed with your skin, as long as you're preparing your skin like you normally would, cleaning it of debris, uh, waiting for it to dry, like Thomas mentioned, and, you know, using a barrier. Um, but I think maybe we should look into this in a bit more detail, if that's all right. Um, so with, because obviously it looks like you're doing this sort of the same thing. So you're, you're using the same adhesives and things. So yeah, maybe we can explore that a bit further. Um, again, with anybody else watching that hasn't asked that question, if you know you're having the same issues, then maybe we can we can sort of investigate, and, and we, we like to get feedback and things as well, so we can improve. Um, okay, the next one is as a laryngectomy patient since 2010, I've experienced different make of base plates, so lots of different makes. I found the glue irritates the neck skin. Um, she's saying they're saying that they currently use the round, just the standard round base plate. Um, but a comment at the end is that they find that Luna, so the nighttime one, very soothing on the skin, but that's a hydrocolloid, isn't it? So, um, so yeah, they're finding this, the, the glue irritates the skin. I don't know if you've got any comments on that one at all. It, it is very individually different. No? Luckily, you can choose from all variants and you have to find the one which helps you the best. And yeah. Where you won't be harmed. No? That's, that's the conclusion. Yeah, it's always worth, I think, as well, um, speaking to your clinician at the hospital and seeing if there's any, your speech and language therapist, if there's any sort of, think if they're happy with you to try something else as well, sort of with, they mentioned the lunar base plate, so the clinician, I don't know how they'd feel about you trying maybe the Probox Life one, which you can change different HMEs, but always mentioning to your speech and language therapist at the hospital and, and seeing what they um, what they say. Oh, sorry, I think somebody's just had their hand up. Is it Christopher? Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if, um, Chris, I don't know if you want to say it out loud. Are you happy to to to, to sort of ask the question out loud? You need to unmute yourself, Christopher, if you do. Christopher, if you if you wanted to ask the question, are you happy to kind of un unmute your, um, your speaker and, and ask the question out loud? Or you could pop it in the chat if you're not happy to do that. I've got Christopher Harding. I think now the microphone is unmuted. Yes, it is. The microphone is unmuted now, Christopher, so go ahead. Who's been around my snowman? Who's yes. been around my snowman? Is there a mind line that you can recommend and deal with the problem? Did you did you say you have the irritation around your stoma? No, in the reality, the skin around my stoma. The skin around your stoma. Did you get that, Thomas? I, I, I just... Uneven. Uneven. Un uneven around your stoma. Yes. All right, Christopher. If you have this um, irritation and eczema also around your um, stoma, then it's likely. Oh, it's not unlikely, it's more likely that you are suffering from an allergy. Allergy has the nature to, to tend to get spread around the direct occlusion site. Yeah. So if you experience that, then it's really wise to consult a dermatologist or your GP and to try to find out which is a trigger one. It can be one of the glue ingredients or things you have, you're using for cleaning the skin. Right. Thank you very much. My Thank pleasure. You. Thanks for that, Christopher. Um, so I've just had another one come. Sorry, was someone just going to talk then? No, um, sorry. Um, so I've got another one coming through here from Trevor, who's saying, as most lar uh, laryngectomy uh, are older uh, people, why does the adhesive remover come in such a small size to hold? twice the size of the perfect size of people who are not very dexterous yeah I that's that's a really good comment actually and um possibly um one that we can actually feed back um I'll actually write that down um sorry size of, I'm just popping that down actually just to feed back because that's a good um comment to make um we like I say we're always trying to sort of um a, a, um improve and things like that and and you know, like you said there are a lot of patients that have laryngectomies are, are uh, older so it might be worth looking into um so we'll, yeah we'll pop that one through um so another one here's from mike that says 
possibly not the doctor's field, but I have trouble with my stoma shrinking if I wear a base plate for too long. I need to insert a Larry tube to expand it again. And sometimes it can be very difficult to get the tube in uh, and it can take 10, 15 minutes. Only seems to happen over the winter. I mean, I can pop in there if you want, or um, maybe I don't know if- It's not if you can have expertise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with, in terms of stoma shrinkage, you should always uh, go to your hospital clinician. Um, that's something that they they need to look into really um, because obviously that's your airway um, you know we'd we'd hate for that to get too small and then uh, it depends what size larry tube you're using um, this one i would recommend you go to a speech language therapist at the hospital or the nurse that you see at the hospital about that um, sorry i know that's not an answer but I'd, I'd hate to give you the wrong information and then um, something happens to you so just always always check um, check with them with them first Good question about the se seasonality, though. I was going to say, is there oh, the a particular seasonality. reason? Oh, yeah. yes, it only seems to happen over the winter. Um, Thomas, I don't know if you've got a comment about the the winter. No. I've, not, I've not, I've not heard of a stoma shrinking. Definitely, uh, particularly. I'm so sorry, I don't know. If... No, that's fine. I just thought, I wonder if you've you've sort of heard anything of that. I've I've certainly not heard that before. So, it, like, it's definitely worth. Uh, I know we're coming out of that, the winter months now, but it's definitely worth um, discussing it with your hospital clinician or your nurse. Um, so with the chat, we've just had one coming in from Christopher um, saying, should you change your base plate daily? So your adhesive daily? It depends on the patient. Huh? If you evaporate a lot, if you sweat a lot, then mm. it can be necessary. But if yeah. possible, and you have no problems in the night, you can leave it in place. Yeah. Huh? That's a yeah. good point, because of why it can help to prevent irritation. Yeah, we there's something that we are certainly on home visits that we would also recommend if someone's got more sensitive skin, uh, as long as you can visualize your stoma uh, and see, you know, sizes and things. That's yeah, that's exactly what we would recommend. Um, so there's there's another one that's quite long, but I'll just read it out. Sorry, guys, we are uh, running over. Um, I'm hoping that's okay for everybody. Um, we've just got, so I've had uh, my laryngectomy operation just over two years ago and find my main problem now is getting intense numbness building up to the scar lines that make my whole head to above my ears that feels very uncomfortable. Um, I change my base plate daily and always use a nebulizer in the morning um, followed by a hot shower before cleaning my voice prosthesis and throat till clean of mucus. Um, so then they're saying that they're okay until they start coughing and things and then they change their base plate and it's normally about mid afternoon but sometimes earlier that she gets this or he gets this numbness um, and then they use capsaicin, cap, oh sorry I can't pronounce that, capsaicin, you probably know, maybe you know that. Capsaicin, yeah. Um, it's yeah. Extract. yeah. <laughs> I should know that really but <laughs> um, to clean the scar lines as advised by the surgeon. Um, is there anything else they can do to help these sessions of, of numbness? Is there anything to help, um, you know, I'm with not, that? Yeah, I mean, numbness, I'm not so sure whether this advice was so good. In dermatology, you use capsaicin to reduce pain. Yeah. Symptoms gives numbness. That's an yeah. indication to which you would like to. Maybe it's wise to reconsider this use. And discuss it with others, yeah, what they would yeah. advise. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not mention of pain, but just intense numbness. I'm I'm not one I'm wondering if it there is a little bit of, of pain sort of related to I know I know we've had people before that have had yeah. Yeah, it's like you said, it's it's worth discussing again with if something's not working as well, isn't it? To to always go right. back. Absolutely. I think that's the main reason, no? If yeah. you do something without getting the right the expected uh, result, discuss yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Thomas. Sorry, we've just got a couple more. So sorry. Um, I'm new to having having to care for my husband who had a complete laryngectomy a few months ago. I'm afraid I don't know much. Um, so she's saying she's learned a lot from uh, YouTube videos. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe you've answered quite a lot because he's, there's lots of um, she's saying any any tips on sort of skincare. But I think throughout your your seminar, you you know you've you've you mentioned how to sort of look after it. So if, if you're watching, um, then maybe if you could uh, pop an email through and we could always go through it a little bit more detail if, if that's okay. Sure. Um, and so 
one more question. I think you covered it mostly in the, in the webinar, but why is my skin so sensitive after radiotherapy? I think you mostly covered that, but I don't know if you've got anything to add really that's to, to that question. It, yeah, I mean, the skin will recover to a certain degree. It depends also on age and the, mm. and the dosage which is given, yeah? But it can last and remarkably long. Please don't get desperate. Yeah. Yeah, I know um, with, um, in particular with home visits we do, we have um, people that have tried different dressings and things when they've got really sore skin, but like you said, it can take a long time for the skin to recover. It's quite a, an assault to the skin, isn't it, um, yeah. the radiotherapy. Um, and why does my skin become more sore in the summer? Um, then it's warmer outside and we transfer it, we have more sweat. So. That's the reason why. So yeah. maybe there's also reason if you live in a climate where the winter and summer change is high, that you have other base plates for the warm weeks, months than mm. in the winter time. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So it's sort of mainly sort of sweating, would you say, under the, the base mix, it's warmer. Um, so, and how do I treat dry skin? So this is the last question. Um, how do I treat dry skin when I wear base plates without having issues with base plates not sticking? Yeah. You can use um, ointments which are not too greasy, that's meaning creams. Mm -hmm. And if you leave them in place for a couple of minutes, then they are absorbed already. And then the base plate will still stick nice. You can try it, not necessarily to your stoma where the skin is fragile, but you can use it somewhere at your um, lower arm, now that the skin is similar. Yeah. Um, and then you can try how long you have to wait before the base plate gets uh it, it he's as 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 strong as you want to oh brilliant that's great thank you so much I, i'll i'll um i think if we just more i think um i'll just go through quickly um we'll just finish up because we're sorry oh we've kept everybody so long and so and kept thomas so long as well so sorry um uh, yeah i'll just talk for a second before we we let everyone go um and if you have anything in the meantime please do just pop it in or send it through to the to the email um, we've got a couple more slides just with a bit of information on um, i'm not sure if you've got them there thomas um, if not we can we can always uh, pop them out um, and yeah. and i think mostly it was just we've got a slide with we've got a slide with some um, support services that um, people can access uh, oh thank you um, Hannah's just popping it on there. So this is just a, a slide on sort of ATOS care and how we can help. We've got our customer care team um, on the phones and email, which is just up there on the screen. And um, we've also got a specialist nursing team who is, um, depending on where you are of your journey, will have um, the nurses that are over the phone that will look after you sort of six monthly normally for about six months. And, and if it's safe to to do so then move you on to kind of customer care and things and and if at any point they sort of flag up that you they feel you could do with a little bit more support and your hospital clinician is okay with that then they could always get one of the field nurses like myself to go out and just possibly even if it's just products to support to sort of show you how to um, apply a product or you know anything troubleshooting or you know anything like that really um, and we can support in that way um, and then there's also the my life events uh, the online events like today um, and also with um, with the events sort of there's oh we've got one next week let me just find um, it, which is um, mostly about sort of confidence and, and rebuilding your confidence and um, and things like that after your your operation um, and and sort of regaining how to regain your sort of sense of identity really because it's a massive uh, thing emotionally as well as sort of physically when you have you know this sort of surgery done so that's on the 29th of March at 2 p.m um, and uh, we will have them quite often and we'll, we'll send them over to email when we have well, when we have these events um, and then we've got another slide here just with um, I think I mentioned it before with the additional support available. Yeah, here we go. Um, you know, which is things like the Swallows and Samaritans and things like that, that you can reach out to that are really, really useful uh, if you feel that you, you can. And, and if not, you know, there's always your, your clinicians at the hospital who you, 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 know, you trust or, or if there's family members around you that you can talk to. Um, sorry, that was a very quick whistle tips. Uh, whistle stop uh, tour of that the support services but again please do email 
um, with with the email on there. And I think maybe Hannah, would you mind just popping it on there um, if you don't mind, um, just, just so people can email if they've got anything. And there's one more thing. Sorry, I know I keep promising I'm going to stop talking, but I, it's obviously my favourite pastime. <laughs> We've also got um, uh, a free uh, giveaway um, that we're, we're running and it will be in the email that you originally received. Oh, thanks, Hannah. Hannah's popped the emails on. Um, uh, yeah, the emails that you received and it's a it's a bib like T-shirt cover. Um, and there's a survey on there, if you don't mind um, filling that out and, and the chance to win one of these. Um, oh, and Hannah's popped the link in there. <laughs> and I'm going to stop talking, I promise. <laughs> I'm going to take over, otherwise no, no one's going to... No, no, that's if anyone has any final questions, otherwise we'll say um, thank you to Thomas again. Um, I think that's been really informative for everyone that's, that's been been listening. Some deep knowledge there about skin that we we might not have ever known, to be honest. So yeah, yeah it's really thank really you great. so much. It's really really an honour to, to join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so anyone... much for giving the opportunity to do it. No, we yes, always get the chance. Thanks. Yeah, it's really great to have someone with so much knowledge about the skin and things because we do have uh, we do find that a lot of the visits that we do are to do with skin. So it's really great to have that sort of background about why your skin might be sore and things. And if there was anything that we didn't answer, please do email us and we can hopefully pass those on to Thomas and perhaps he can he can still answer them for us if that's OK. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. And um, we will hopefully see you on the 29th of March. And you'll, that, unfortunately, you don't get to see me on that one. I'm sure that's <laughs> No, but that will be an open workshop. So it'll be yeah. everyone on screen, free to chat and ask questions. Um, and it will be presented by a fellow laryngectomy, Mark uh, Valentine Morton, um, who'll be kind of talking more in detail about his experience with a background um, as a psychologist and actor. So, um, yeah. It should be a really good session, that one, if you're available next Tuesday. Well, John's so devastated that I'm not hosting the next one. So there, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. It's been brilliant. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, again. Thank you, everyone. Nice Bye. Good thank luck. you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.